Skywalker is the heart of the enemy's project. To prevent its completion, you'll need to either shut down or destroy the artificial intelligence that functions as its brain. According to Huey, that AI is now undergoing final calibrations in Strangelove's lab. It's inside a tropical cloud forest. Slip in and terminate that AI before they ship it out. Those papers the CIA gave you, was there any data on the Shagohod in there? Shagohod? A nuclear tank that launches IRBMs. It competed against Grounding System for approval. Oh, the thing with the rocket. Designed by a guy named Sokolov, right? <laughs> What's so funny? No, I was just remembering some of the commentary Granin added to the Shagohod papers. You should have seen the way he badmouthed it. It was too conservative, too ugly. Uh, I can imagine. He was so angry when he wrote that, he smeared up the ink. And you know how shoddy the paper is over there to begin with. I'll bet. That's grinding, all right. Imagine accelerating the launcher itself to 300 miles an hour to extend the range of an IRBM. As stupid as it sounds, it's a hell of a concept. Who but the Soviets would think of using a tank as the first stage of a rocket? I actually took a cue from the Shagahod when I developed the pupa. That hovercraft thing? You stole that one, too? Give me a little credit. I only borrowed the concept. The technology is original. As it turned out, hover technology wasn't enough to handle all the terrain in Central America. It relied too much on brute force. But the Shagohod was a major threat. That thing could corner like you wouldn't believe. Built pretty tough, too. You sure know a lot about it. Uh, it almost did me in. I couldn't forget it if I tried. Did you in? So you were the one who took it down. Wow! You really are amazing. I didn't do it alone. No, seriously, thank you. We might not be here today if they'd begun mass-producing that thing. Then again, they're hard at work now miniaturizing nuclear warheads. Pretty soon they won't even need an accelerated launcher like the Shagahod. Great. That means they're that much closer to being able to launch from anywhere in the world. Chico, you know much about Cloud for us? Mm, not that much. All I know is there's a world of difference between a rainy rainforest and a foggy cloud forest. But they have some things in common. But like, for instance, you gotta watch out for poison dart frogs. Both rain and cloud forests have high humidity, so they're perfect environments for frogs and other amphibians. I mean, it's not like just touching a strawberry poison dart frog or a dying dart frog is going to kill you. But don't eat them no matter how hungry you get. I can get all the rations I need from Mother Base. No jungle food for me this time. Seriously? You're not disappointed you don't get to eat wild animals? <laughs> what do you think I am? <laughs> Just kidding. In Colombia, though, there's a frog. The golden dart frog that's lethal to the touch. How do you know all this? Come on. Don't you think poisonous animals are cool? Not if you get poisoned by one. Well, obviously... One more thing. When you get to the forest, be on the lookout for Bigfoot. I... I... think I'll be okay there. <laughs> From here on in, you'll be in a cloud forest. The ground is covered in vegetation. You'll have plenty of hiding places, but so will the enemy. I'll keep an eye out for scouts. Trying to force your way through would be suicide. Know the enemy's location before making any moves. Too bad you don't have some sort of radar. Hmm. I could try night vision. Once you know where an enemy is, decide how you want to handle him. You could get into his blind spots. Or drop him from a distance before he even has a clue someone's around. An eye for an eye, right? Costa Rica's forests are more diverse than you might expect. Not all of them are tropical rainforests. Costa Rica is close to the equator, it is true, but it is also very mountainous. Yeah, I see what you mean. Go up 4,000 feet in elevation and the temperature drops more than 7 degrees. There are basically three types of forests. The lowlands are covered in tropical rainforests. 
The highlands by tropical cloud forests and areas where there is a dry season have tropical dry forests. How's the mule treating you? Uh, at this pace, I should be there by tomorrow morning. You've got to hurry. The AI could be completed any time now. It'd be nice to have a guide. Already on it. I've enlisted Pass to help you. She knows the jungle pretty well. Snake, I know you are an expert in survival, but you need to stay alert. You are in an ancient jungle so foggy, you can hardly see the trees. It is home to 2,500 species of plants, including 400 types of orchids. There are also 500 species of butterflies and over 400 species of wild birds. The bedrock is solid enough that Mayan ruins have miraculously survived centuries of earthquakes. Uh, an AI lab in a Mayan ruin. Who'd have thought, hey, Huey? My sentiments exactly. That doesn't mean security is any less tight, though. You still have the ID card I gave you, don't you? Mm, got it right here. That'll get you through the gate, no problem. After that, you're on your own. As long as the A.I. remains unassembled, Coldman's plans on ice. <laughs> what about security inside the lab? Well, it shouldn't be a problem for you. Strangelove demanded that the security presence inside the lab be kept to a minimum. It's not all good news, Snake. Coldman knows we're here. He's raised security in the area surrounding the lab. You'll be seeing a lot of that chrysalis UAV, and a bunch of patrol choppers, too. There may be scouts in the jungle lying in ambush. As you approach the lab, be extra vigilant. I'll be careful. Strangelove's lab is a few miles to the north. It won't be long before the AI is complete. Don't let that happen. Careful. If there's enemy scouts around here, they'll be nearly impossible to see. that are actively hidden.
Fulton recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter. Fulton recovery to helicopter is complete. Fulton recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter.
for putting me on the R&D team, Snake. I'll cut to the chase. We've commenced development on our own bipedal weapon. The only thing is, we don't exactly have easy access to resources here. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have the budget of a defense department behind us. I understand. That's why I want to ask you something. If you fight any more AI weapons, could you try to gather as many of their parts as you can? That would really make things go a lot smoother. Again, easier said than done. If anyone could do it, you can, boss. You single-handedly took out the pupa. True. Look, if you're not interested, I can just work with what we have here. I'm not trying to force you to take unnecessary risks. You're the boss around here. All right. No promises. But I'll think about it. Great. Also, each AI weapon has a head part that serves as the core of its armament. Recovering a head part will allow you to use the weapon associated with that part. But those guys won't go down without a fight, so don't get too preoccupied with this stuff. Don't worry. I'm not about to risk my life for a bunch of scrap. I would hope not. Uh, well, one more thing. Our new bipedal weapon needs a name. Mm, good point. We can't keep calling it our bipedal weapon. I had a talk with Miller, and we came up with Metal Gear Zeke. Metal Gear... Zeke? Yep. As you know, Metal Gear was coined by Granin. And Zeke? It's a name the U.S. military gave to Japanese aircraft that flew during World War II. Zeke was the Japanese Navy's best fighter plane. So are you okay with that, Snake? <sighs> sure. Fine by me. Miller was saying that an army without borders will need a deterrent against other countries. He's right. With Metal Gear, MSF can achieve true independence. Here's hoping. Thank <laughs> you.